Hola, Sharks. I'm James. I soy Joanna from Raleigh, North Carolina. We're seeking $400,000 for 7% mm -hmm. of our company. Buena, Buena Papa, Papa Fry, Fry Bar. Bar. Buena Papa is a Colombian expression meaning... Good people, but it also means good potato. Because who doesn't love potatoes? But they never seem to get the center of attention. How many times have you heard? Would you like a side of fries with that? But potatoes okay. make everything better. And as a couple from two very different cultures, we've learned to put two things together, create something even better. Yeah. And that's why we created Buena, Buena Papa. Papa. Latin-inspired meals piled high in a fat stack of hand-cut, made-to-order gourmet french fries. Mmm, que delicia. Oh, it's a fiesta in your mouth and the whole world's invited. Each of our signature dishes start <laughs> out with 33 ounces of fresh-cut potatoes. That's over three large potatoes in every meal. No one can ever finish one by themselves. Our unique culinary experience combines the comfort of French fries with the irresistible Latin flavors from cultures around the world, like Colombiano. Oh, Colombia. Mexicano. Mexico. <laughs> Puerto Rico. Y muchos más. And many, many more. Why are you translating for me? They know what I'm saying. Honey, they don't speak Spanish. Look, Mr. Wonderful looks confused. <laughs> I can't tell you exactly what she just said, but what I can tell you is, with our bilingual menu, customers can order in Spanish and have a little fun at the same time. So vamos, sharks, and join these buenas papas as we bring the sabor sensation to America. All right, sharks, who's ready? Let's go. It's a papa. Let's try. Woo, love it, love it, love it. All right, welcome back, Super Entrepreneurs, to another Shark Tank business review. All right, so... This uh, and if you're oh, if you're new here, I'm Joe Pardo, and and welcome. Uh, this I I love this idea. Uh, fresh cut potatoes. Um, one of my favorite places to get uh, fresh cut uh, potatoes in the French fries uh, is down in Ocean City, New Jersey, right on the boardwalk. Uh, they there's a uh, Jilly's Jilly's fries uh, is to to me it's it's the best. I, it's one of those ones that you got to get every time we go. I generally try to get a small because if I get the medium or the large, I'm probably not going to eat much uh, more <laughs> than that. It's it ain't it ain't uh, no McDonald's fries. That that is for sure. Uh, that looks absolutely phenomenal. I I wish I was down uh, in North Carolina where they're at to get these. Hopefully we'll get some franchises and get. Get, get one up here in the Northeast uh, in the Philly area because I would love to go try it. Um, maybe next time I'm down that area. Might not be too not, might not be too long from now. Uh, the, the love to go and try it out. But uh, 400000 for 7% is uh, it states to me like they got some sales. Uh, we're going to check out their website and their social media at the end. So stay tuned for that, as well as one of your comments from down below in the super community. Buena papa. All right, guys. Uh, Mr. Mark, what do you have there? Yeah, I got the healthy one right Ooh, here. Well, healthy yeah, salmon. What makes it healthy? Smoked salmon, sweet potatoes, guac, and pico. That's all healthy. I have regular oh, potatoes. Oh, yeah, sure. the Carolina. Mm. That is pulled pork. Pulled pork. I've got to get through. There's four sauces. There's four different sauces. <laughs> so we have a special one called Buena Sauce. It's our house made. It's mayo. It's garlicky. It's cilantro. Ooh. Delicious. I just had it. It's delicious. Oh, I like that. The fries are really good. Awesome. Well, I'm going to give you an Ichi Wabacaramba. Oh! It's pretty good. Muchas gracias. And people have fell in love with this since we opened. Yes. It's been an, a crazy, mm. amazing ride. When we first opened up, we had $18 in our bank account. Because we wow. invested everything. $18. $18. Because we had invested our life savings. Uh, we wow. had $40,000 saved. And uh, this company actually started in the pandemic. This idea just came to mind. We thought about Latin food when you kind of go on vacation. You're in Cancun or mm -hmm. San Juan, Puerto Rico. All those different street foods that you have there. And how good it tastes. And how can we bring it back to America and adopt it on top of these fries, right? So we served the family. They were our test dummies. <laughs> they loved it. The kids loved it. And they said, uh, hey, Dad, can we have some more? And I was like, you know what? I may have a business here. So we opened up uh, July 2021. Mm -hmm. Where did you open? In Raleigh, North Carolina. After that, $18, two weeks later, we had $18,000 in our bank account. Two weeks after that, on TikTok, we went viral. An influencer came and tried all of our dishes. And two days, we had 16 million views. Mm -hmm. Wow. 16, 16, 16 million. 16 million. Wow. Wow. And when I saw people just coming and eating those potatoes, I said, oh, my God, it's working. So tell us about your background. How did you guys meet? Sure. Well, hold on. Before we get there, um, look, th that goes to show you that you don't, I mean, they invested all the money that they had uh, to make that work. And I mean, that is a big bet on some potato, on some potatoes, on something that I can get 
uh, from McDonald's or for like it's so many places, right? Wendy's, uh, Chick Fil A. They're down. They're down in the south. Uh, you know, all, all the places you can get French fries. Um, and yet they felt they had something different. And I would I would venture to say the test bed for this would be like the nacho fries at. I mean, this is not even in the same comparison, obviously, but but just. The idea that um, people would look at uh, Latin American food and and say and French fries and it goes together, right? Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not again not comparing the two, but just saying if if I'm looking at a marketing aspect, like you see how much marketing gets pumped into nacho fries, and those are really not that good. Like they're just okay at like I. They're okay. Like they're edible. <laughs> like and maybe a little like they're a little bit above edible. Um and they 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 pump all that money into that. So I, I yeah, I'm curious as to what the where this, the four hundred thousand is gonna be be going here. We're, we're actually high school sweethearts. <laughs> oh. we met, yeah. We met the last two weeks of high school. Yeah. And I pursued her like nothing other. Oh, that's and, a oh look at that. Oh. That's us. Yeah. And ever since then we've been building with mm -hmm. each other. Anybody got restaurant experience? Not restaurant experience. So I've been an entrepreneur all my life. I started out actually working for Queen Latifah at Flavor Unit Entertainment. And at that time, um, the Latin boom was going on. So I, I pitched, how about we do a Latin management, you know, agency? No one was really, like, focusing on these on these new Latin stars. And i kind of always been to Latin culture. Mm. Joanne, we haven't heard from you at all. Oh, I'm sorry. wow. Um, I talk a lot, sorry. Okay. You do talk a lot. I do. Um, well, my family immigrated from Colombia, South America in the late 1980s. And when I went to school, nobody could understand me. I ended up being placed in the yeah, back of the class. I eventually learned how to speak English, right? Yay. Um, I was the f first one to graduate from college for my family. And then I went back to the school where they sat me in the back of the class. And I worked as a teacher for 12 years. Oh, teaching at the same school. Talk wow. about triumph. Love that. Okay, so. Love the teaching aspect. Uh, love the, the being able to overcome the the setbacks that come with being a, a person who doesn't speak the language when they get here. Uh, it's interesting that, that they also met at the two weeks at, to the end of school. But I, I mean, I too, but how, like, where did, wait, what, I, where'd that picture come from then? Like, were they in at the end of high school? But at, at, I don't understand. Cause prom is like definitely not in the last two weeks of high. Uh, it seems kind of odd. Maybe, maybe, uh, James and Joanna, you should come on the show for an interview and we could hash out that timeline. Maybe it got kind of lost in trans lost in translation there with, uh, with the star tank editors. Talk about this product. Yes, sir. Yeah. Tell me about the cost of making it and what you sell it for and sure. what the margins and are. Your margins. So on average to make any of these dishes, it, it ranges about three fifty per plate. Cost. And what do you sell it for? On average, thirteen fifty. What's your overall margin? Okay. Our food margins are 28%. 28? Wow. It's 28%. It's a little light. Is that your net profit margins? Or well, that, no, that's no, the, no. on average, that's where it's at, uh, 28% uh, for our food costs. Oh, no, it's just saying cost, food cost, not your yeah. margins, right? Yeah, so not, not, not margins. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, his margins are 72. Okay, well, then you're okay. Yeah. You're in good shape. Today, yep. are you in stores like this? So that's our first store, uh, and it's a 200 square feet footprint. Yeah, I love that. Our first year, we did 1.5. One million. Yeah. Wow. Woo. We took all the profits from that and invested into this store. Mm -hmm. How big is that one? That one is 700 square feet. And how's that doing? It's doing really well. So combined this year, we're going to finish at about 2 million. What did you make last year on the 2 million? Sure, uh, about 200,000. Did you pay yourself? We paid ourselves 80,000, so that's what? One, uh, 120. 120. Mm -hmm. So you have two stores. Well, no, no. Well, we have three stores. The third one is uh, at an arena, actually. We're opening up a fourth one in Miami uh, mm -hmm. this month. Where in Miami? Uh, Winwood, Miami. Oh, you'll kill it. Yeah, we're excited. We also, <laughs> yeah, he probably will down in Miami, uh, you know, with all of the uh, Latin uh, heritage that's down there. So, I, yeah, I mean, that is... Um, especially, I mean, if, if, if it's, since it's authentic, you know, to a certain extent, authentic, um, based upon, you know, how you're looking at Latin culture as a whole, um, absolutely a great idea. Uh, the, um, what I, I, what I love there is them getting and, uh, taking that, cause I'm sure it wasn't cheap to get into the Carolina hurricane stadium, um, 
you know, I'm wondering if like an opportunity became available and they were like, you know, maybe we should maybe we should go. I'm sure it was not cheap to do that. So like ding ding for for taking that risk um, and and going into it. And because like the stadium's not open every day of the year, you know, every day of the year is only. 82 plus if they're 82 games. Uh, and then I don't think, I wonder, I don't know if there's not a Carolina basketball team that plays there unless it's the, not, it's not in Charlotte. I don't think so. Wouldn't it be the Charlotte um, Hornets. I think it's the Hornets. I, I don't know. I'm uh, not super NBA, but anyway, unless it's the Sixers. Um so that, that is definitely a risk. I mean, but there's uh, lots of, you know, I'm sure like the Disney on ices and and those other kinds of monster truck shows and things that come through. So but even concerts. So but I, I still can't see where you probably would get maybe. I'm just guessing to like 200, like two thirds of the year or ish you would have operating uh, for that for that thing for that. um for that and or if it's and maybe it has to go through like an aramark or or a similar type company that like will do, do the vendor like the vending of that uh of that operation for them so we started franchising uh-huh. okay and on uh-huh. our opening month of our franchising program we sold four franchises what do you charge for those 29.5 for Plus. initial franchise fee and then how much per month per uh, year eight percent royalty fee Two percent of that is uh, marketing. And how long okay. has the longest one been out there? Is this new? Well, this is this is brand, brand new. new. Brand okay. new. So we just sold these franchises. So, like, what are you looking for? We're looking Besides for Besides four hundred thousand. Well, a strategic partnership to help us build this brand. All right. We got franchises selling. We're excited about those. We know we can move this company along at a nice snail plate pace. Doesn't well, we sound like a snail pace. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I'll tell you the hiccup though. We're a young company. So when we go to banks and we walk in, and we're looking nice and pretty, and they're like, "Yeah, so we need yep. some money to open up a new store." And they're like, "No, you're still considered a startup." Yeah. So that was the issue. So we've been taking our own profits and opening up these stores, which I've learned now that is not healthy. Why is that not healthy? Because we're sucking up all the cash flow. But do you have any debt today? Seventy thousand of debt on the business, not nothing huge. Okay, right? but I think it's a fundamental question. Like, do you, would you rather grow with a lot of debt and scale and maybe not make a profit, or or do it the way you're doing it? You started this when you only had eighteen dollars in your account, and now you're running a two million dollar business. I mean, you should be so proud of that. Thank you, thank you. Thank but, you. Th- th- I'll tell you why it's not healthy. It's not healthy because you're you're rolling the dice and and like saying, okay, everything's working here. It's working here. Let's take that and roll it again, right? And you know, you you do have, <clears throat> I, well, in the in the case in the case of their business, uh, there's probably not a whole lot of assets there, right? You have some of the equipment and the fryers and things, so you could get, you know, some of that is assets, so you could sell it if you, you know, if a location didn't work. But what I like the most is is it's such a small footprint for a store. Like they could do a food truck as well. Right. Uh, if they wanted to and, and make that work. Um, it's, it's such a, it's such a, a, like I said, small operation that like you could find smaller locations to put that in that are cheaper rent, um, cheaper to operate and, and make it work. So I like that's the that's the piece that I I want to say like is not healthy. You know, if if you take all your money, you put it in there and it doesn't work, you're still making money at the other locations, but you you really have to be extremely stringent if you're not having some kind of money um like line of credit to be able to kind of I don't want to say the word play cuz that's kind of iffy, but to 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 take that risk um i mean it's dangerous either way but at least at the you know if you're utilizing a line of credit and you keep bouncing that line of credit you can you can kind of balance it with like your winning locations versus your you know your losing locations or not as strong locations you know you just got to be really careful about where you're placing them but because it's such a small footprint you don't need like a huge rent you know mondo rent sized payments each month so i i like I, I i to me i'd rather see them grow slow like at a at a not a snail's pace but the, i mean they're going they're going pretty fast because it's not a lot to the operation to make it go and uh 
of course, growing it starts to have its own issues, right? Like they run into sourcing for food and, you know, you start franchising out beyond a certain like, you know, you're going to have a location in Miami. So you got to make sure you're, you've got food suppliers that are, that are going there and you know, the quality of the food is good. And there's, there's a lot of things that can go wrong when you're so far away from the operation. Um, so, they're, they're, and especially for two people that don't have food backgrounds, uh, it can get really tricky in, in a hurry when you start putting locations that aren't in your backyard to be able to, to manage. The issue is we want to have more speed because I know that somebody else is going to come into this market. Listen, I think you're doing everything right. I think mm. when you race and run with something like this, where you have to make sure you land in the right places, that you do everything correctly, right. it's not like you have to blitz the market with it fast. People can't copy that. I would not want to speed it out mm. there. I would not want to race it. I wish you good luck, but I'm out. Thank you so Thank much, you, Lori. Lori. Thank you so much. Mm. So, so the, the five-year plan for us is to open one corporate store every year in the next five years. And that's going to end up at, uh, at the end of five years at $10 million. So, guys, mm -hmm. running a restaurant is a hard business. Once you franchise, you're in a second business. You're in the babysitting business. Mm. Yep. You're in the so daycare sure. business. Yeah. Because you're taking $29,500 from somebody, and they're buying your dream. Mm. And when they want your help, you better be there. Mm -hmm. If you guys were just in this, I was interested, but you're in two different businesses. I think that's going to crush you. So for those reasons, I'm out. Ah, wow. Thank wow. you, Mark. Okay. So, very impressive. Yeah, it, it is. It is somebody else's dream that they're buying into. And they're, um, and again, you, you get the quality issues and you, you got the marketing issues. You need to make sure that you're providing that marketing, um, effective marketing, marketing that's, that, that speaks for all of those franchisees. You're going to have people calling you morning you know morning noon and night right it's it's uh it is a full full time uh effort when when you get into that boat of having other people that are sending you money for something that uh while maybe making them money or if it's not making them money then you got to help them figure it out right that's where you have every piece of the uh the processes the SOPs in place so, uh, it, it, yeah, there's, there's a lot that comes with franchising. It's not, it's not that simple. It's just collecting some checks and, and having a banner for them to put out front. It's delicious, but frankly, uh, with the change of my lifestyle of eating, I, 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 I wouldn't eat this. And I like to get behind the products that I invest in so I can use my face to push right, the business, right. you know? I'm out. You know? Yeah, I'm not even gonna say it. it's all good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't need to say because super community knows what I'm talking about. Um, they. The other. The other thing that is is when it's not going well, um, and and you want or and you want to make changes. Now you have people, all these end users, right, that are your franchisees that. You know, I don't like this change. I don't want that change. Uh, I want to be able to use my own system. I want to be able to introduce this product into our product lineup and things of that nature. Makes it really um, sometimes can be really tricky. And then when you when you enable wiggle room, like you're you let them do that, but then you're not. But you're going to come in like come after us for doing it this way. You know, these these are things you gotta you gotta think about when you start having taking other people's money like that. What I think, I think you don't really need anybody. I think you have the whole package. You have each other. You're progressing nicely, and I think you'll continue that way. So I'm out. Thank you so much. Thank you, Barbara. Wow, still have I one thought Barbara would be Robert, it. What are you doing? All right, guys. What I've learned is, if you find great people, great things can happen. And you guys are amazing. I mean, to go from where you were, no money, to build this size of yep. business. I've been there. Mm -hmm. Let's figure out this thing together. Okay. Bye. The only thing I hate is the valuation. Let's figure out this All right. thing together. Okay. Bye. The only thing I hate is the valuation. There's no way this is worth 5.1 million. Let's talk about it. Okay? You're making $120,000 a year. How is it worth 5 million? Actually, Robert, it's 5.7 million valuation. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> so, after Miami opens up, with our four stores and our franchise stores, we should be about six million in gross sales. Gross sales. In gross sales. Next year. But that's not today. It's probably worth about 
Well, I, two million today. I'm valuing it off of what we're going to do next year. Future earnings. Story. Yeah. Well, I'm valuing it off what it's worth. I got you. Today. Make us an so offer. So for me, it's about two million dollars. So four hundred thousand, twenty percent. Okay. Okay. That's Can we counter offer you? Stop. That's the beauty of Shark Tank. You can do whatever you want. Let's help pop us. <laughs> All right. The good potato. 15% for the 400K. No. 400,000, 20%. You know I'm going to be there. We're going to invest more. Mm -hmm. Let's meet halfway, 17%. Let's close the deal, eat some papas, and let's go. 400,000, 20%. Let's go. 18%. 20%. <laughs> oh, Oh my goodness. Squeezing 19, the 19. potatoes. Squeezing. 19%. Yay. Yay. Oh, all right, cool. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. it got done. Over 1%. I, I'm surprised Robert Bent on that. The food was amazing. Yeah. Congratulations, guys. All right. You can check out the website and social media here. We're going to take Buena Papa from Raleigh, North Carolina. Yes. It's going to travel all over these United States until it's in every metropolitan city in the United States. Woo! Love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, they, they, so they played this at the end of last week's episode, and, and actually maybe all the episodes. So, so oh, oh, I missed it. Ah, it started at the end there. Uh, maybe I can pull it back up here. Let's see. In the United States. Woo! It's like the last frame, but it says calling all high school students, uh, 13 plus. What was your favorite pitch from tonight's episode and why head to shark tanks, official Instagram and comment on our sweepstakes post using shark tank school sweepstakes. Um, it, so I, you gotta go to abc.com slash shark tank for details. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, I guess all the teenagers are on Instagram still. Is that is that a thing for them? I, I'm not really sure, but anyway, let's check out the website. I've seen on Shark Tank. A little hard to read there, but they're pushing, you know, become a franchise partner right there at the top. Um, this is a little hard to read too because it's it's blue on blue. So uh, you, you know, you guys might want to get that get that tweaked a little bit there with the uh, the Shark Tank, but. I mean, I love that it's that it's showing uh, on Shark Tank, even though it's not them in the. I mean, they're technically like they're right there, but not in the picture. Um, the French fry specialist now open in Durham, which is pretty cool. I mean, it looks fantastic. I will definitely want to uh, go and try it out. Is that churros? They have churros. I want churros. Yeah, I want I want those churros for sure. 20 uh so 31 likes over there 22 uh what was it or yeah 20 22 weeks ago sorry 18 likes 22 weeks ago uh i didn't i let's see where uh you got 12,800 followers over on instagram and quite a bit of uh engagement over there as per usual i mean gosh that just looks fantastic absolutely fantastic and over on facebook got 3800 likes which is great to see it's the reviews 14 reviews 4.4 stars awesome well uh look i was well, the shark tank post has as per usual quite a bit of engagement um actually quite a bit of engagement on these other posts as well so yeah Great, great job. Uh, would love, love, love to have both of you here on an, uh, for an interview. Just drop a comment down below. Like Juan here says, uh, uh, you honestly read my mind ethical. Well, I, it was not intentional, but you know what I'm, you know, you know, I know, you know, you know, Juan, I appreciate you being a part of the super community. I'll see you in one of these two videos over here. Take care and go be super. Go Phil's.